It's finally here, the Trezor Safe 7. I'm Sean, and today we'll be taking a look at Trezor's brand new hardware wallet, our most advanced product yet. We're going to go step by step through the setup process and highlight some of the new features that make the Safe 7 stand out from previous models. This is our first wireless device, so we'll go through this walkthrough on a mobile device. However, everything in this video can be done just as easily on a computer, and it follows all the same steps. When your Trezor Safe 7 arrives, one of the first things you'll notice is the security seal on the box. This seal confirms that your package hasn't been opened or tampered with. If it looks damaged or suspicious, contact our support team first before proceeding. If everything looks good, however, go ahead and open up the box. Inside, you'll find a Trezor Safe 7, a get started pack with basic setup instructions, two wallet backup cards, a USB-C to C cable, and a few Trezor stickers. As with our previous models, you'll also find a holographic security seal covering the USB port on the device itself. If the seal shows the word void, it means it's already been removed. Only proceed if the seal is intact. Unlike earlier models, the Trezor Safe 7 includes an internal battery, which means you can power it on without plugging it in. Press and hold the power button to start the device. If you have an Android device, you can use a wired setup, which can power the device using a USB-C to C cable. This gives more flexibility as it's not dependent on the battery. And we even allow you to disable Bluetooth entirely for a wired only connection if you prefer. If you do choose to use the cable, make sure to push it in until it clicks into place for a proper connection. When you power on your device for the first time, you'll be greeted by the welcome screen with a message at the bottom that says tap to begin setup. Press this to show a QR code, which will lead to the App Store on iOS or Google Play Store on Android. This will allow you to download our app Trezor Suite, which you need to interact with your wallet. If you already have Trezor Suite installed, the QR code will simply open the app for you. It's important to note that you shouldn't have paired your Trezor Safe 7 to your mobile device at this point. If the device is connected prior to being set up, it might not be recognized. Once Trezor Suite is up and running, the first option you should see on the screen is to connect your Trezor. In this video, we'll be connecting via Bluetooth, but like I said before, the Trezor Safe 7 also supports a wired connection on Android in case you don't want to use Bluetooth or the battery isn't charged. On my phone, I'll press connect, and then the device will appear on screen with an option to connect to it. If you don't see anything pop up on your phone, you might need to allow it to scan for nearby devices, or perhaps check to be sure that Bluetooth is turned on. If everything has gone well so far, then after hitting connect, you should see pairing codes pop up on both your Trezor device and your phone to ensure the correct devices are being paired together. Now that our devices are connected, it's time to get set up. Click let's get started and you'll be prompted with a security check. The security check is just there to cover a few questions for safety. Did you buy your device directly from Trezor or a trusted reseller? Was the holographic seal intact and undamaged when you unboxed your device? Was the packaging sealed with no signs of tampering? If your answer is yes to all three questions, we'll continue to firmware installation. And don't forget, if you have any security concerns at any point in the process, you can always contact our customer support to help with any unexpected issues. So back to firmware installation. All of our devices ship without firmware installed. So if the app says there's already firmware installed and you've never used the device before, that's a red flag. We'll go ahead and begin installing firmware onto the device by selecting Install Now. This process shouldn't take more than two to three minutes. By the way, if you didn't know, the Trezor Safe 7 features the world's first auditable secure element, which means that the component that keeps your keys safe can be independently verified by parties outside of Trezor. This is what we mean when we say we prize transparency. You don't have to trust us. Anyone is free to verify what's happening inside our devices, along with their code. If your firmware is still being installed, your phone screen should show fun facts about Trezor until it finishes. So be sure to check those out. Once the firmware is installed, your Trezor device will reset and you'll be good to continue. You should now be looking at a prompt to create a secure connection. When clicked, your Trezor device will ask permission to pair with your phone. This step is to create a fully encrypted wireless connection between your phone and your device. If you're a technical person or you're just curious and want to learn more, you can look up Trezor host protocol on our knowledge base online. You can see in my case that my device is asking to pair with an iPhone 15 Pro Max. You'll be given a one-time security code, which you'll need to enter on your phone to ensure the correct devices are being paired together. Next, you'll need to approve the authenticity check. This is to ensure that your device is genuine and should only take a few seconds. At this point, your Trezor Safe 7 is pretty much good to go. You should see now a prompt to run through the tutorial. 
Take a few minutes to go through this to familiarize yourself with the device and its functions, especially if you haven't used it before. With the tutorial finished, you'll be ready to create a new wallet or recover an existing wallet if you so choose. If you're upgrading from one of our older devices, such as the Trezor Safe 3 or the Trezor Safe 5, simply follow the standard recovery process by entering your wallet back up for the device of your choice. Keep in mind, this won't deactivate older devices. Multiple devices can have access to the same wallet. This also means it's a bad idea to recover a hot wallet onto a Trezor device, because the hot wallet would remain vulnerable to any security concerns it might have. If this is your first time owning a Trezor device, you'll want to create a new wallet for receiving funds. This step will also include creating a wallet backup, which is the key to recovering your funds if your device is ever lost or damaged. Now, before we begin the wallet backup process, one of the most important things you should know is to never make a digital copy of it. You shouldn't take photos. You shouldn't take screenshots. You shouldn't store it online anywhere. Wallet backups should always be stored offline, and the most common method of doing so is by writing it down by hand. If you want to get more serious, you can purchase something like a Trezor Keep Metal to protect from environmental factors like fire and water damage. Always keep your wallet backup a secret and don't share it with anyone. To help illustrate just how sensitive this is, if you share your backup with someone, or if someone stumbles across your backup words, they can use those words to access your crypto using any other wallet they choose. This means they'll have the same access to your crypto as you do, and they can take any action they like with it, including sending your crypto to a different wallet that you can't access. The Trezor Safe 7 allows for different backup standards, but the default option is known as a 20-word single-share backup. The reason it's called a single share is because it's a single group of 20 words. There's a more advanced backup option called multi-share, which is multiple groups of 20 words. We don't recommend this to first-time users. If you've never owned a Trezor device prior to this, the 20 word single share backup is what we recommend. Keep in mind, you can transition to a multi-share backup at some point in the future if you like. Once you confirm the backup type, the app will list a few helpful reminders before getting started. Materials. Make sure you have a pen and paper ready to write things down. Time. You'll need around 10 minutes. Privacy. No one should be able to see what you write as you continue through the process. Your device will create a new wallet for you before displaying the backup words one by one on its high resolution screen. This makes it easier than ever to double check your backup words before writing them down on the backup cards provided. And just so you know, if you're using a 20 word backup, words will repeat. Specifically, words three and four will always be academic. Other words may repeat too, and this is all by design. It doesn't indicate anything wrong with your setup. Once your backup is done, continue on your phone and you'll be prompted to set a pin for your device. We recommend at least four digits and to avoid anything predictable or guessable like birthdays or patterns. From a technical perspective, the more random it is, the better, but obviously shoot for something that's still memorable to you. Once your pin is set up, you can choose which coins you want to enable. You can select Bitcoin, Ethereum, or thousands of other supported coins and tokens. Keep in mind, the coins displayed here remain on the blockchain no matter what. This setting simply allows them to be displayed, and you can turn coins on or off at your leisure in order to view them. By default, most coins are turned off because the more coins you turn on, the longer it takes for all of them to load from their respective networks. If you're only using two or three coins, Trezor Suite will load much faster compared to activating everything we support. Once you've made your choices, press confirm selection. And one last thing. You might have noticed your device did a quick backup check before asking you to create a pin. This is a basic verification practice, but we recommend taking the time now to do a full backup check to ensure you wrote down all the words in the correct order and without any typos. A new feature on the Trezor Safe 7 is that you can now do this directly on your device without even connecting to Trezor Suite. Just open the menu, click settings, security, and then check backup at the bottom. This feature means you can verify your backup at any time, anywhere, using only the device to ensure your wallet backup is correct. Your Trezor Safe 7 should now be fully set up and ready to use. You can start receiving coins, generating addresses, and exploring the features inside Trezor Suite. Don't forget to always verify addresses on your device's screen before confirming transactions. Your device screen is always more trustworthy than the computer it's connected to. And if you found this video helpful, share it with someone who's starting their crypto journey. Likes and comments also help this video be seen by those who need it, so if you want to do us a favor, throw one or both onto the video. 
Thanks for watching and welcome to the next generation of self-custody with Treasure Safe 7.